Welcome back everybody, I'm Tassie with Tassie Eats and today I'm doing Sipu Pancake. This is a Korean pancake and then I also have Bogogi Gimbap that I made. Both of these I made in the description down below. You guys can see how you can make this if you want to, that way you can make yourself at home. Now, um, in the description for the Korean pancakes here, you'll notice I actually used a bag of this but if you don't have a Korean market close to you, I'm also gonna put the ingredients so that you can also make this. That way, if you don't have the bag, you can just buy all the ingredients separately. Oh, it in the mouth. <laughs> mm. Now, I love their seafood pancakes. Um, the only thing is whenever you go to an uh, Asian, whenever you go to a Korean restaurant, it's like $15 or $16 for one of these. And every restaurant makes them really differently. Some make it very thin, which I prefer it to be more on the thinner end. I don't like it to be super thick because I've had really thick ones at restaurants too. And I'll also show you how to make this sauce too if you want it. It's just basically soy sauce, rice vinegar, a little bit of the Korean pepper flakes, and um, sesame seeds. Now, traditionally, when they make this, the onions are very long. And there's a lot of them. <laughs> I don't like that much onion in my Korean pancakes. So for my recipe, I actually chop them up so they're thinner. And then I just mixed it into the batter. And sometimes they don't use eggs with this, but I like mine with eggs. So I have eggs in mine. As a reminder, you don't need it. I don't you know. I mixed the egg in the batter. But a lot of times what Koreans would do was they would actually make the flour batter, pour it on the pan, and then they would crack an egg, whisk it, and then pour it over it. I don't like to do that because I like the egg to be more evenly dispersed. <clears throat> now, I have made this with beef. Okay, so if you guys want beef, I definitely recommend using ground beef. It works great with this. Um, or else really finely, thinly sliced beef, like a bulgogi beef. You can also do that in here. And um, I like the beef. It's pretty good. Now, <clears throat> for the seafood in here, it's a, it's a melody mix. So it's a little bit of everything because I like to eat seafood, so I didn't care that there was octopus, squid, uh, there was a little bit of mussels in here, shrimp, and so, you know, it's it's up to you. If you don't like that, I, I know that you can just make this strictly shrimp, okay? I've made these before. They're just a bulgogi kimbap, my favorite. This is two pancakes and this is one roll. <clears throat> But I like mine with sriracha because this can be a little bit salty.
This is not bad with the sriracha. <laughs> This one came apart. Normally, I don't like carrots. I hate cooked cook carrots. But this is just lightly sauteed with sesame um, oil and a little bit of salt. And so it's still kind of on the raw end, but it's been infused with that sesame oil. And then it's just water. And how I cut this like pizza slices you can um, you can just run a pizza slicer right, right through it cutter um, but I was too lazy to get out my pizza cutter so <laughs> I took shears and I cut them into the slices which I've seen them do at restaurants too but some restaurants what they do is they cut them in squares instead as so well it's really up to you whatever you prefer but there's a Korean restaurant literally a block from my house and I love it's like a Korean barbecue place they also have items you can just order off the menu and whenever I go there I want to get their seafood pancake but it's like $16 and I have all the ingredients at home to make it and like my soul just can't let me order it so I can never order it when I go there I have had it there before it was like a big event and everybody went there and then somebody ordered it but <laughs> and it tastes the same when I make it at home. But it is thicker. It's the thicker one. And I like it thinner because the ends they get crispy. So it's like a nice crunch into it, like tempura. -y. All right, don't break on me. Oh no, you're you're starting to break on me. Because what I'm trying to do is lift it and dip it in here a little bit. Oh God, it's all going in. I'm losing. I'm losing. <laughs> Excuse me, here. <laughs> oh God, it's salty. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Nope. Not gonna do that again. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. This dipping sauce, it is the same for this. Mm-mm. That was like really bitter salty. <laughs> like my rice caught in there and it just absorbed into the rice. Anyways, this is pretty bland. It has a taste. But it's not as salty. And it doesn't soak up the sauce like the way the rice does over here. Mm. And this is really good on its own. You don't need the dipping sauce. And honestly, you can put whatever veggies you want in here. 
but you don't want to like be over zealous and put too much <laughs> only because it can basically break your pizza and it won't keep it in its shape so you want to kind of measure it out if you're putting like zucchini in here um anything like that you can put red red bell peppers and everything in here it doesn't add to the flavor okay don't think if i add it it's gonna make it taste so much better it's really just the color because um in a lot of asian cooking they like a lot of different colors in there different textures uh i know for among people when you're cooking a meal for elders like when you're younger people they don't care as much but when it, when traditionally when you're cooking it for an elder you need to always have something fried, something boiled, something steamed, um, some kind of like veggie, all veggie dish only. So, you know, like, so for Asian cooking, they like to do a lot of variety. And so, you know, if you don't want to put those things in, you don't have to. It's not going to add a great deal of flavor or something different to it. Mm. And I just bit into a type of the Thai pepper I cut in here. I didn't have any red bell pepper or green ones. Um, some people use jalapeno in here. It's kind of salty. Or I think I'm having a residual memory of when I lost my kimbap in here. <laughs> And the inside, the center, it tends to be a little bit more sheer than the outside. You know, like, um, and that's why I recommend you cooking them thinner and don't put too much batter in the pot because then, um, your inside will be really gooey. Some people like that though. I like it to be a little bit gooey and then more crispy in the outside. I have burnt this before. <laughs> Because I wanted like the whole thing to be super crispy and it's almost like it's no longer the pancake. It's just wholly deep fried. <laughs> <clears throat> I do like the Thai pepper in here though. And when you bite into it, it does give it a spicy kick. And it just gives you a little different taste. And if you like a lot of onions in there, go ahead, put a lot of onions in there. I don't know if you guys have ever had this before, but there's a Korean side dish where it's basically kimchi, but it's made out of green onion. So just imagine kimchi, take away the cabbage and replace it with green onion. Oh, I know that some people like that. You know, that's why it's out there. It's available side dish, right? I've had it. 
and I like had to wash my mouth down. And they always serve like mashed potatoes for some reason, but <laughs> I was like taking spoonfuls of that mashed potato to get rid of that oniony taste. I'm not a fan of of that much onion, and I'm you know like I've seen people eat that, and they make it seem like it's really good, but then. And I'm convincing myself, like, oh, you don't taste all the onion. You, it must not be, like, oniony. No, it's oniony. And I don't really like to hold this because my hands get really greasy. Okay, I'm going to retry this with the soy sauce, just a very little dab. Doesn't do anything for me. It's just kind of like a ooh. no. I think I overstuffed these. They're like not sticking. I was a little excited. Pretty good. I ate about one and a half of these pancakes. Alright you guys, don't forget, if you want to see how I made this and the kimbap, there's a description down below. You can find the YouTube link for that. Other than that, thank you for watching.